It's my feel good breakfast show. Absolutely, absolutely, brother. You know what? From one adventure to the next, and people often set out bucket lists uh, of triumphs that they would love to achieve in their lifetime, but few actually go about and tick them off. Now, for one man, Mondo Sitolo, that is different. He has not let anything stand in the way of his adventure goals, and uh, he's sailed uh, the world to places including Namibia, Ascension Island, Fernando Island, uh, Brazil, Trinidad, and also Lake Geneva. He's also twice summited Africa's highest peak, Mount Kilimanjaro, as well as uh, Mount Elbrus in Russia and also Mount Denali in Alaska, all before his 25th birthday. And on top of everything else, he inspires the youth through his club called the Desert Rose Adventure Club. Monday is with us in studio. Brother, man, how are you doing? Man? No, I'm superb, man. How are you? I'm not too bad. I see the adventurer in you. Uh, I mean, it's, it's you're always in, in, in action gear. You've got your boots on already. Are you heading off somewhere? Yeah, I'm going to Hrut Fentaruk. After this, I'm taking some few kids up the mountain. I love that, man. Mm. I w take us back a little bit. This adventure drive that you have, um, mm. how did it come about for you? What made you want to be this adventurer that yeah. you are today? I always say to me, there's really no formula. One thing led to another. I've always been an armchair adventurer from a long time, mm. and I met a lady by the name Anche. Uh, she ran an, an organization called Cape Wind Jammers, and she told me about an ex adventure that they were going to be. We, uh, they were trying to collect like youth, uh, African youth, to, to sail on a tow ship. We were going to sail uh, Namibia, St. Helena, Sentinel, and Fernando. And Brazil. So, and I applied for that, and I couldn't swim. I couldn't do anything. Wow. And uh, after I uh, I applied, I was accepted. And I remember one instant where I was aboard the tow ship, and I was wearing only my board shirt. And for me, that actually uh, it actually confirmed greater things yet to be achieved for me. And everything that I thought was far fetched, and uh, it became tangible and became real. And yeah. after that, uh, I applied for the Micron and Young Explorers Camp, and I was accepted, and I went to Switzerland. And w there, I, when I met Season Explorer Mount, uh, uh, Mountaineer Micron, that is when the bug beat. And I came back and I told myself I wanted to climb the highest mountains on each continent. Yeah. And while I was climbing Kilimanjaro for the first time, I came back. I was kind of dissatisfied with the whole touristy vibe of the mountaineering. So I told myself that I should climb it alpine style, which yeah. is non-assisted, limited fixed ropes. Not wow. because I'm superhuman, because I always <laughs> say that mountains for me the, are not stadiums where I satisfy my desire to achieve. They are the, uh, they are the very cathedrals where I practice my religion. So there's a deeper, there's a deeper there's reverence, a deeper. there's a deeper respect for the mountains. So I need to climb it as natural as as possible, you see. I like that. So, yeah. Uh, so, it's safe to say the adventure bug solidly bit you. Um, yeah. Now, like I've mentioned, you've climbed some of the highest peaks. Mm. Um, you have sailed across the world as well. Mm. How has these adventures, these experiences changed you as a person, which I'm sure translates back into mm. what you do with the youngsters through your club as well? Yeah. Uh, I remember one instance when I was leaving for Mount Elbrus, which is the highest mountain in Europe. I got dropped by a gear sponsor the day before I left, oh, you no. see. So I had always told myself I wanted to climb these mountains, and I had been saying it routinely every yeah. time. And when I had been dropped by a gear sponsor a day before I left, it actually, for me, it actually asked why, what was the intent, you see. So when, and when I was there, I realized that you climbed the mountain many times in your head already. So for me, it actually... It's not the mountain you conquer, but yourself, you see. So the mountain is a, a catalyst for change. The mountain is actually, it, 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 it's the actual hero, but mm. it actually gives you more, you learn more from the mountain, yeah. you see. So for me, I always say that it's not, uh, you, I always say that it's not the mountain you conquer, but yourself, yeah. you see. So I've learned a lot. It has been a catalyst for change. It has uh, influenced my worldview. And yeah, and this is why you want to pay it forward as well. Mm. Um, talking about these experiences, you know, you're doing something quite unique in terms mm. of you know adventures and whatnot, and that's mm. why we have your your mm. Desert Rose Adventure Club. We're going to be taking a look at right now. Thank you for, so much for joining us this morning, mm. my man, and for inspiring mm. the youth. But mm. like I said, the true Mandela Monday story this morning. Let's quickly take a look and see what the Desert Rose Adventure Club is all about and how Monday inspires the youth. Mm. Monde Sitole has sailed, skied and climbed mountains all over the world. He started the Desert Rose Adventure Club to motivate youth from Kayalicha to dream big. A lot of young people from my community have somehow lost the capacity to, to dream. 
So I, I saw a gap, especially because the, the, the young people I work with come from troubled backgrounds. So I saw a synergy in extreme sports, which is mountaineering and sailing. So we, we kind of mutate that reckless spirit and we do it with something more positive. What we want to achieve with the club is to create high altitude, high disciplined athletes, Olympians, and compassionate young people who will also partake in the development of our country. Coupled with the adventure sports, Monday helps build confidence and teaches how to positively direct assertiveness through public speaking. It is a skill he's passing on to the young members of the club. We understand that public speaking has a direct correlation with self-esteem. We also get their own opinions of what they have to say about the community because most of the time it's, it's solutions about the youth but not with the youth. So we want to incorporate the youth. We usually do courses, we do uh, seminars with the young people so they can stand up and speak out and also tell their story because telling your story is another part of healing yourself. Apart from improving one's assertiveness, public speaking also assists in improving verbal communication skills as well as one's critical thinking. I enjoy public speaking because we impress the community, the youth of the community, trying to, to tell them about the climbing so that can, some of them can be interested. We're trying to change our lives and others' lives. Additionally, outdoor activities in the Adventure Club are a form of ecotherapy, which is proven to reduce depression and improve mental health. I think initiatives like this are so important, especially in a township. The initiative could be able to bring more youth closer to nature, see nature as a place where one could be able to then relieve one's stress. And also, nature teaches you a lot about life. So it was changing the mindset of the youth that the energy in which I wanted to fight, I am angry, into a more constructive, in a more creative way, in a more way that is more developing and seeing that how, how can I contribute now to my own community. I think that is our main achievement, to have individuals who's dedicated to change their ways in order to change the ways of the society. Transforming the mentality of at-risk youth is an adventure on its own, and Monday's approach is simple yet effective. I realized that when you give young people an experience, there's little that you need to say, because there's something intrinsic, something latent, something dormant in them that gets switched on. 